So if you've been around the channel for a minute, then you may remember my new gear resolution to not buy any new gear for 2021. Now the goal of this was to get by with the gear that I had and make the most of it. But I kind of broke that when I bought my 67 Deluxe and I broke it again when I bought this cool old basement cab for a project. And again, when I bought the Golf V2, which is a really cool course vibrato pedal made by my friend Drew of Swindler FX. So I haven't exactly stuck to that, but I am going to strip back for about the next month or so. I'm in a place right now where I don't really have any gigs for about another month, and in my lessons with students at Sanford University, we've been talking more about tone and effects and all that kind of stuff. So I want a smaller pedal board that's easier for me to take around. So now I'm going to pick one guitar, one amp, and just a few pedals that can fit on a Pedal Train Nano as my only stipulation as my minimalist rig. Now, this isn't gonna be like a budget rig build or anything like that, but it is going to be what I would keep if I could only keep one guitar, one amp, and a few pedals to get by. So, with all of that said, this is gonna be pretty difficult, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what comes out of it. So, without further ado, like and subscribe if you enjoy the video, and let's jump in. All right, so I'm gonna start with what I think is the easiest part of this, and that's picking a guitar. I only have three electric guitars, and right now my ES339 is actually on loan to a friend of mine. So with all of that said, that still wouldn't be the guitar that I picked if I had to pick between these three. So my other two options are this Mexican-made Fender Telecaster that you haven't seen as much of on this channel, but this was my first real electric guitar. And truly, if I had to get rid of everything else, I would keep this guitar because it wouldn't really sell for that much, probably only worth four or five hundred bucks used, and it was my first real electric guitar I got when I was 13 years old. So, with all of that said, realistically this one would stick around, but I'm between this guitar and one that you've seen a decent bit of the past year that I've owned it, my Sir Classic S Antique. Now, between these two guitars, I have to go with the Sir for being more versatile. But if it came down to it, I am kind of more of a Tele guy. That said, these guitars are separated significantly by price. But all of that said, I think I'm still going to go with the Sir. Now, the reason behind this is the Strat gives me a lot more options. Having both single coils and humbuckers, I have a lot of dynamic range in this guitar. And I do think if I had to have one guitar, even if I am more of a Tele guy, an HSS Strat is really hard to beat for covering a wide variety of genres and sounds. So, the easy part's probably out of the way. Now, it gets a little bit harder when choosing an amp and what pedals I'm going to use. So this part for me is going to be more difficult than picking between the three guitars. And that's because this 67 Deluxe is a really exceptional example of Fender cleans, but I can also push it and get some good crunch out of it. And it also has reverb and tremolo built in. So that means that I could cut down on another pedal or two since I can already do so much with the amp. But on the other hand, if we're talking about gain staging and such as that, the Badger 18 for me is still my favorite amp. This is still the one amp to beat of all of the ones that I've owned and played and can get some really great edge of breakup tones and even heavier overdriven tones. It's also very dynamic so I could set it up at a medium overdrive and then since I'm using a Strat, I can just dial back that neck pickup volume and really get some great cleans out of it. So between the two, I have to go with the Badger 18. While this may seem silly to some people, practically too, if I was gigging one all the time, this one's a more modern amp, I can replace it more easily, and they're still being made, so if I had to pick up another one, I could easily get my hands on it. It would be much harder and much more expensive to get another mid-60s deluxe, and again, at the end of the day, this is the amp that suits my playing style more. Now, it doesn't have reverb or tremolo, so all I'm getting out of this is a little bit more dirt, so that's going to mean that the pedal board selection is going to be a lot harder and definitely the most difficult part of this challenge for me. So I already know a few things that I'm definitely not going to put on this board. I'm not going to put any kind of standalone modulation pedal. Now for me, that's basically only the Gulf by Swindler effects. I'm also not going to put anything that's too crazy or kind of too niche. So for me, 
I'm not going to use a compressor on this board while I love the Cali 76, and I'm also not going to use the Congra or the Pitchfork. Again, those are all really cool pedals. I get a ton of use out of them, but if I can only have a few pedals, in this case, three to maybe five max, I'm not going to use anything that's not going to get used most of the time. So I can go ahead and eliminate that. I can go ahead and eliminate the pitchfork. Uh, I'm going to eliminate the looper as well. Again, no compression, no chorus, vibrato, anything like that. So now I'm kind of at the front of my signal chain and I'm going to work my way down. I definitely want to fuzz, so a couple of options that I have since I've eliminated the Congra are the JHS Kilt and the Mythos Golden Fleece. While I love both of these, the Kilt can really do a lot more. It can do overdrive and kind of a gated spitty fuzz and that kind of thing. Where the Kilt leaves me wanting often is in that low to mid gain range, low, low mid gain. I do like the way it breaks up, but it's more of a character sound for me, so for that reason, I'm going to eliminate this, which means that if I'm left with fuzz, it's got to be the Golden Fleece. Now this is a great option too because of its size. It's really small. It'll be easy to fit a few more pedals on with this. So with that in mind, I now kind of need an overdrive, and this has to be something for me that is really capable. I need it to do more than just low gain. While the Badger can do some heavier gain stuff well, again if I'm gigging or I'm getting most of my dirt from my pedal board, I need something that can do more than that. So a couple of options are the Dude by J-Rocket, which is a great overdrive, or the Norton preamp. Now the Dude I really like, but because it kind of does the Dumble thing, I find I like it a lot more with my Deluxe Reverb. So, in that case, I'm going with the Norton preamp, and Todd has graciously sent over a new version of this, which is really cool. I love the way this pedal looks. I think he's done a great job nailing the aesthetic. Everything else is the same, but it is an updated aesthetic that both he and I prefer a little bit more. Now, the great thing about this is it gives me a nice kind of dirty boost on the blue side, gives the amp a bit more body or just a little bit more push when I need it with a ton of volume on tap. It also gives me the red side, which is overdrive, but it kind of does the more compressed thing. So even if my amp is set fairly clean or just a little bit broken up, this can really cover a wide variety of gain. So with those two out of the way, things get a little bit more difficult. It's easy to make the first couple of choices, but even those are kind of subject to change at this point. Even though I don't have nearly as many options for delay and reverb or anything else I'd want in my signal chain, if those pedals take up too much space, then I may have to compromise a little bit. Now, I'm confident in how many overdrive options and dirt options I have between those two pedals and the Badger 18, again, especially for a minimal board this size, but this is where things get a little bit harder. I really, really love my wet section right now, which is the El Capistan and Flint combo, and both can do a ton. Where this becomes more difficult is because if I had chosen the Deluxe, I wouldn't really have as much of a need for the Flint because the Deluxe has reverb and tremolo. But because I've gone with the Badger, I kind of need reverb and I would really like tremolo. So I have a few options here. I have the Flamma reverb pedal. It's a mini reverb, it's fairly simple, and it has a couple of sounds that I genuinely like. So I could use this, and this again doesn't take up much space. So if I use this, and I don't have to use something like the Flint that is much more substantial in size. All of that said, this does give me a good modulation option and it's kind of built in because I do really like the reverbs in this and would use this more. So that's tough. The other side of this is, I also have a flashback mini that I got for a crazy deal on Facebook Marketplace and it was just kind of an impulse buy. But the great thing about these is they have a USB thing on the side so you can choose a bunch of different sounds and tone prints on the website. Now the bad thing about this is there's no tap tempo, there's no oscillation option or anything like that without physically moving the three knobs so it's more limited in that sense. So if I go with that, then I save space from using something like the Strymon El Capistan. But on the El Capistan, I also have a reverb option and I can hold the tap switch to oscillate and I can do tap tempo for subdivisions. So I'm going to play around with this for a minute and I'm going to make a couple of decisions. All right, so I've decided that this is going to be the rig 
as you can see first I have the golden fleece then I'm going into the Norton preamp out of the Norton preamp into the El Capistan and out of the El Capistan into the flint now it's kind of hard to see but there's just a little bit of overhang right here at the end from the flint but I'm not really worried about it the flints built really robustly and the good thing is is all the jacks are on top and those will have plenty of space so I'm not worried about that I think I can make the rest of these cables fit on the side jacks so the only thing left to do is to wire it up and hear how it sounds a couple things I should address really quick you may have noticed that I didn't put a tuner on this board now while I'm a big advocate for tuning this guitar actually holds tune really well and something like a headstock tuner would be perfectly fine for me even if I were gigging with the setup and if I only had four pedals one of them probably wouldn't be a tuner you may also be thinking that I don't have a good way to mute myself and on my pedal board you're right there's not but I do have one of these handy Mogami Neutrik silent plug cables and this is basically just a specialty end that allows you to unplug without any noise. So you'll notice that my amp is on but you're not hearing any kind of buzz or anything like that when I ground it out and when I connect it we're live again. So these cables are super handy. I built mine myself but you can find them all over the place. They're not cheap, but again, if you're handy, you can build one of your own for relatively inexpensive. So, all that out of the way, let's see what this thing sounds like.
So, as always, I love the way this sounded, but I want to know what you guys think. So let's get a good discussion going down in the comments below. Let me know what your minimalist rig of choice would be. Would you pick any of these pedals? And let's just keep the pedal discussion down to say three to five pedals or something that you know would fit on the Pedal Train Nano. As far as amp and guitar, I'm sure that's completely subjective. Maybe just something you've owned or a great combination that you've played in the past. But I would love to know your thoughts down in the comments below. I'm really, really impressed with the sounds I got out of this board. I mean, I knew all of these pedals were great and capable going into it, but some of the combinations between all of them I was really pleased by. The Golden Fleece is capable of giving you those classic fat, fuzz face type tones, but you can also get great clean tone rolling off the volume knob, again, like the classic fuzz face. The Norton helped tame some of the high end coming off of the fuzz when I wanted it to, also just fattened everything up a little bit to the point where I didn't ever want to turn off the blue mode unless I needed more gain and then I switched over to the red side and Todd has done a killer job with the new aesthetic. I love the way it looks. The El Capstan for me, tried and true and not going anywhere. You heard me do the hold oscillation and a couple of different delay modes on it. And finally, last but not least, the Strymon Flint. One of the best reverbs out there. One of the best pedal tremolos out there. You heard the harmonic tremolo with the fuzz towards the end and it just sounds huge can also do everything from classic spring reverb all the way to really ambient stuff. So I feel completely confident in using this board for jazz, blues, classic rock, anthemic stadium, U2 type rock. Could probably get away with some 80s rock and into ambient music and some crazy fuzzed out Hendrix type tones. So really pleased with this and it's going to be my board for at least a little while. So I want to know what your choices would be if you had to put together one guitar, one amp, and say three to five pedals or pedals that would fit on the Pedal Train Nano. Let me know what you would use down in the comments below. As always, thanks for the support. Please like this video. It really helps me out. And if you enjoyed it, consider subscribing. But that's all for this video, and I will see you guys in the next one.